This time it's the turn of Azure Active Directory Dynamic Administrative Units. What are they? How do they work? And as always, what can they do for you? Stay tuned, you might learn something. Hi everyone, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. Uh, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first visit, I really do uh, appreciate your visit. Now, in this week's episode, I'm gonna take a look at Azure Active Directory Dynamic Administrative Units. And this is a really important demo, so make sure that you watch the whole thing right through, because there are a couple of interesting bits at the end. Now, um, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, so hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And as always, if you enjoy the video, please bump that like button. It really does make a big difference to me. Now, at the end of the video, we've got our usual question time. And if you've submitted questions to the site recently, then, you know, watch out your question could be featured on this week's episode. All right, so I think without any more jibber jabber, I think it's about time we got to the demo. So let's take a look at Azure AD Dynamic Administrative Units. So I'm gonna kick off my demo here in Microsoft 365 and I'm gonna come into the Admin Center. Now, just before I show you the Dynamic option, let me just show you the traditional option here. So if I go, just expand that. And if I go into roles, we have administrative units here. Now, I've actually covered this on a previous video. And if you haven't seen that, then I'll, what I'll do is I'll paste the link below. So feel free to go and uh, check that out. Now, the problem with using Microsoft 365 as an option is if I come in here and let's say I call this um, let's say I'll call this my New York HQ and in here I'm going to click on next um, you've only got certain options so you can add up to 20 users in groups either manually or you can use um, a the bulk add feature and here you can actually upload a CSV or comma separated value file via Excel or something like that with the names of up to 200 users and groups. Now, there is a sample file to allow you to do that, but it's not dynamic. No, it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel that. Okay, let's come out of that option because that's the more traditional approach. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to go into Azure Active Directory. Now, this is a new preview feature, so it's currently in preview. And by the way, if you've not had a look at some of the preview features, definitely check them out, they're here. Um, the preview features are either here or here. And you can come down here and you can see that dynamic admin units are now available in Azure. Now, now I'm not sure whether they're available in every uh, tenant in the world. So it, it may be specific regions, but generally, you know, most of them are available. Okay. So again, I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to come into admin units here. Now, this is a really cool feature. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to click on add and let's create a, a new office. So I'm going to type in New York Okay, I'll call this my New York HQ, and you can put in a description there if you want to. Now, the next thing that we're gonna to want to do is add in an admin role. So who's going to manage this administrative unit for me? Now, whatever role you give a user here, it's limited to this location, to this admin unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user admin and this is the second most powerful role in Azure actually and I'm going to assign Adele as the user administrator for New York. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to create that and off it goes and it creates that uh, administrative unit for me. Now um, next thing then, um, let's go in and have a look at this. 
So the first thing is you probably want to assign some users and groups. Now in the past, you would have just gone in manually and added members in. But what we now have is we have a number of new dynamic features. So for this, I simply go into the properties and this is the preview thing. You can put in a description and this is it. So membership type, you can choose a assigned and this is the traditional way, or you can use a dynamic user or a dynamic device. So this is very cool if you've got, let's say Microsoft Teams, you've got Teams phones available and you want to have an administrator who is gonna be responsible for managing uh, those devices. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on a dynamic user for the purpose of this demo, and I'm gonna go ahead now and add in a dynamic query. So you can also create your own custom extensions as well if you want to. Um, for the purpose of this demo though, I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple. So I'm gonna say, okay, if city, uh, let's say equals, and I'm gonna say New York, okay? So if anyone in the company is registered in New York or has a property value of New York, then they're gonna be a member uh, of this um, administrative unit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna save that, and again, I'm now going to saving. And you can see after changing the administrative type, the existing members may change based on the dynamic membership. All right, now let's click on that and that now updates that. So now I literally, you can still go in here and by the way, um, you can see those membership rules. So if you need to go back in, there's the membership rule tab now, okay? So this is a new uh, tab that's in here. And you can see that the add and remove member options are, are now gone, yes? So you no longer have this feature because it's now dynamic. Now, um, so how does that work? Well, I'm gonna just pop back into Azure Active Directory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a user here. And I've got a user called Alex, and I'm gonna go into the properties of Alex's account. And you can see that it's now got all the different attributes here. So I can say, yep, I want to go ahead and I want to edit some of these attributes. So at the moment, Alex is in San Diego. So I want Alex to be in New York, okay. So I'm now gonna add him in uh, New York. And again, I can change that if I want to. I'm going to update that now. As soon as you update that, that rule will kick in. Actually, it doesn't kick in right away. There, there is a regular pulse that goes out that doesn't update, okay? So it might not happen immediately, but at regular intervals, a pulse goes out and it will then update that. So now Alex is now a member of New York and thus he will now be a member of that administrative unit, okay? And that's typically how it works. Now, just heading back into this, so I'm gonna go back into users. Now, you won't see anything yet. It does take a little bit of time to uh, update. Um, and you can you can actually see the membership list because it's dynamic. Um, but what you can do is you can run reports. There is there's a number of reports that uh, do come in. Now, um, if I come into groups, this is a num another kind of cool feature as well. Um, now, in the groups area here, you can see uh, again groups in this area cannot be added in the dynamic administrative unit because of the membership type. Okay, so um, dynamic user or dynamic device. So you, again, you cannot add in um, groups. Now, if you are using assigned users, so if you decide not to do the, the dynamic rule um, and you uh, do assigned, one of the new features here is you can actually create a group here now as well. So you couldn't do this before, you had to create the group separately, all right? But this is kind of cool. So you can now go ahead and you can create that group dynamic, dynamically uh, in here, okay? Which is good. 
uh, and that then um, allows the administrator of that um, administrative unit to manage all those users and groups. Now, the other thing that we've also got is dynamic devices, or rather just devices, I should say. And this is where, again, um, any kind of devices that is being managed by local admins, again, uh, you can see membership rules, um, you get that same thing. So again, um, every anything that you want to add here, you need to either uh, add in through the users, through the groups, um, for example, uh, location, you know, anything that's in the rules, um, you need to go in and essentially uh, edit those attributes. And it's the attributes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that affect membership of these devices. And essentially, this is attribute based authentication. Very, very cool. All right. So, Administrative units. Let me just refresh this page here. Let's just see if this has come through. Okay, and you can see that the New York office has come through and you can see here it's now showing up as a dynamic group. So currently in preview dynamic uh, administrative units, definitely go ahead, check it out. It's a very, very cool feature. All right. Um, now, just before I leave this, there is one thing that you should know. Um, uh, of course, we know that Adele is the administrator of this. So if I pop down into uh, roles and administrators, and I'm just going to scroll right down to the bottom here, and I'm going to come into the user admin role. Um, of course, you can see that in active assignment, Adele has now been activated as an administrator, but look, only for the New York office uh, is she an administrator. So she doesn't have authority in any other administrative unit or even in Azure Active Directory as a whole. So there you have it, dynamic administrative units. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please bump the like button. It really does make a difference uh, to my channel. Okay, well, it's that time again. It's time for question of the week. First of all, thanks to everyone who has submitted uh, questions this week. And if I haven't had a chance to answer you, your question, then please forgive me. I've been absolutely crazy busy this week. But anyway, um, I, this was last week's video. This was the session on uh, 365, new external access features that you must know. And I had a whole bunch of questions and I like this one, Lily. Um, she gave me a nice compliment, that always helps. Um, but she actually said, um, when editing external members to shared channels, which is of course is a new feature in Microsoft Teams, currently in preview by the way, do they also get access to the respective Microsoft Teams default general channel? Now, no is the answer, okay? And the reason for that is in Microsoft Teams, traditional guest access is normally done by um, an admin or an owner inviting somebody to the team. And if they're invited to the team as a guest, they see everything. But the idea of shared channels, Lily, is the fact that you can just give them just exactly what they need when they need, yes? So they only have access to that dedicated shared channel. So it's almost like having a, a, a team where you've got um, a number of different channels going on 
and you want to have, let's say, a public channel. So the rest of the team is completely private, but this one public channel you may want to share with a contractor or a customer or something like that. That's the idea of shared channels, and it absolutely rocks. Now, if you've not seen that video, then go ahead uh, and check that video out. Uh, the new external features that you must know, and it also introduces the likes of um, B2B Direct Connect, which is, again, it's just using Microsoft Teams to start with, but there's some really exciting features coming down the wire uh, for that feature. So there you go, Lily. Thanks very much for asking your question. And you were the question of the week. Thank you. So to participate in uh, question time, all you need to do is post a question down below and you never know, next week it might be you. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much. Uh, I really do appreciate you stopping by. And if you've not subscribed, bump that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And summer's here, so have a great summer. And uh, I will see you very soon. So take care, all the best. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.